Uh, we're going to kick things off for the second half of the day with Thomas. He's going to tell us about installing OpenStack on Debian and uh, give us a little demo of how to use it. Hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So I'm, who am I? I'm 30 years old. I'm the founder of GPL Host, which does hosting all around the world. A French guy living in China. And I'm the founder of the OpenStack packaging group on Alios. So I've been involved in packaging OpenStack since the Cactus release, means after it was one year, one year old. Um, and I'm currently the most, if not the only, active uh, maintainer of OpenStack in Debian. I'm also the upstream of a uh, few software. And I package other things in Debian, like uh, XCP, which is the only way to use Zen together with OpenStack. Uh, I used to do lots of PHP peer packages, but then now that we've got a b much more active team. So GPL host has many points of presence. That's the same slide I push every, every time. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, OpenStack is, as you may have heard, is big. It's a lot of packages, uh, both in terms of OpenStack itself, that has uh, more than 100, producing more than 100 uh, binary packages. Um, and it's, it takes me a long, long time to, to deal with that. This is an LS of my working folder on my laptop, and I had to interact with all of the Debian packages that you see here, just to give you an overview. Uh, so uh, it's not easy to package, to, to set up, because it has many uh, moving parts. Um, and for each component, you, you, you have to go through a procedure, uh, which consists of register registering the component to the authentication program, which is called Keystone, um, set up its database correctly, and then all this is, is both error prone and it takes too much time, okay? So um, when you set up an OpenStack um, cloud, your goal is to set up OpenStack compute, okay? S but to have a successfully running OpenStack compute system, you need to be able to give it some images. So that's how Glens comes into play. Uh, so Glens, uh, basically, you upload images, download images, modify them, and then you can give them to it to, to Nova so that it can start virtual machines. And then you have Cinder. Cinder does the block storage. So if you need permanent storage, permanent partition, or boot from a hard drive, then you will do that through Cinder. Then there's Quantum that does the networking. So each customer or user of the cloud can uh, build its own network, its own LAN, which going is going to be private and will not um, do like that with the clouds of the other user of the cloud. Meaning I can use 10.0.1 network while somebody else does as well. And then you have supplementary packages like Heat that does auto-scaling and Cellometer that does the metering. So you need to have all of these components set up and on top of that, you, you use the, either the CLI or the Web Horizon interface. So uh, Horizon is the da OpenStack dashboard, and it's just another client. And there's another component called Keystone that does the authentication. So when you talk to any of the components here, you will do it through the Keystone authentication mechanism. So Keystone is not only authentication, it's as well um, a catalog of services. So Nova, Glenn, Cinder, Quantum, Heat, and Solometer will all register their services with the IP address, port, URL. They will, you have to insist, in, uh, you have to tell Keystone where they are, okay? And once that's done, so for the storage, you can either use Cinder, which does block storage uh, by using L, uh, an L LVM slices that it will, it will push to uh, iSCSI. But that's not what I use. I use Ceph because I think it's better. 
uh, because it it, um, it does the storage for everything in OpenStack, including object storage, image storage, and Cinder. So you plug Ceph to Cinder, Glance, and Nova. Um, each each of them has to be configured in a way so that it can access your Ceph storage. Uh, once you've done that, then each component needs to be able to talk to each other through a broker, a, a queue, message queue broker. So you have the choice between uh, QPID or RabbitMQ, but mostly everybody uses RabbitMQ. So you set that up, and then in each er on every component, you say, here's my configuration, here's the IP of RabbitMQ, here's where it goes, and then after that, magically, all the components can talk to each other. And uh, every of these components, uh, Nova, Glenn, Cinder, etc., they also need to store things in the database to keep the state of your cloud. So many wires, and for each of them, you have actions to do so that it's configured correctly. So how it goes with Nova, then you would create the SQL database, grant access uh, rights to it, um, edit in the configuration file the SQL connection directive, edit my IP, uh, define the RabbitMQ IP login passwords, uh, then configure it so that the Keystone auth token goes to Keystone. Okay, this is exactly what I wrote to the on the schematic. That's what you have to do with Nova. Once everything's done, then you magically invoke Nova Manage and then the DB Sync, and then it populates the database with uh, tables and content. So once you've done that with Nova, you have to do the same for Cellometer, Cinder, Glance, Heat, uh, uh, Quantum, and for site packages like Keystone and Horizon, you have a minimum of setup to do as well. So uh, as well, the DB Sync is, it was a bit of a mess. You have to do it uh, differently for every packages. And at the end of the day, uh, people who really deploy the cloud, they do Puppet Script, Chef, DevStack, or many ways to do it so that they don't do it uh, by by hand. Uh, so what I've tried to do on OpenStack is to make it easier for newcomers to use um, the packages uh, using just DebConf. Okay, so uh, I, what what the DebConf does is that it uses uh, OpenStack PKG tools that I wrote, so that it automates all this process of registering one component to another thing. Um, so why I'm explaining all that is because you, even though you have the DebConf questions, you still need to understand which components will, will be plugged where, otherwise it's, you won't understand what to answer. So uh, let's see how it works for Nova, for example. So uh, the first thing is using dbconfig common to uh, configure Nova to access um, uh, MySQL. If you're used to uh, run cube or uh, I don't know, PHP my admin, then it's the same thing. So uh, do, do you need to access the database, uh, configure with db conf config common, then which type of database, MySQL, the password, uh, and then af after that is, is done, then the postint of Nova will do the db sync for you so you don't have to think about it. Uh, each component has to register to the Keystone catalog, so I did that as well as an automation. So you tell what's the IP of your Keystone uh, server, what's the uh, tenant name for... In Keystone you have the concept of an admin tenant, which every uh, package of OpenStack will uh, use to get, get in touch with others, to get uh, authentication tokens to talk to other components. So uh, it asks for the admin and the username and the password for Keystone, and then it does the registration. Uh, so every API, so what we call an API program in, in OpenStack, would be the REST server with which we will interact to, to do things. So like, for example, there's Cinder API to create block devices, there's 
um, uh, quantum server to request new network source subnets. So every of these API, API packages, they have this endpoint configuration thing inside DebConf. So register with the catalog. So by default, it's no, and if you install the package, it will still be no. So that way, you do it only once, even if you install the package. Uh, so what's the Keystone IP? What's the Keystone auth token? So the auth token of, of Keystone is a special one that you use to set up to um, bootstrap rights. Okay, so to do the the Keystone thing and uh, register the services, we, you just use the auth token that you set up when you created uh, when you installed Keystone itself. Uh, you answer which the region? Wh what region? So the region is that. It's like a, a bit an availability thing. So okay, you can have, I don't know, uh, Lecan or uh, Zurich, whatever. Uh, so there's, I, I've tried to set up some sensible priorities so that you have uh, less questions when uh, when it's uh, in high priority. Uh, if you want to to uh, have all of them and make sure you do what you want, then you you, you just set it to medium. Uh, I tried as well to uh, pre-fill all the questions, so, so whenever it was possible to detect things like uh, the volume group in Cinder, then I, do, I did that. And at the end, there's uh, a meta package thing so that you can install everything at once. So uh, one of the very common ways to set up OpenStack would be that uh, you install uh, a controller that controls all of your clouds and then multiple compute nodes. So when you install OpenStack compute node, it will set up Nova compute running with KVM and uh, OpenV switch. S so it th this will include as well quantum plugin OpenV switch agent, which has to run on both the proxy node and the compute node. Okay, So it, it will set up all of that for you. You don't need to care. Uh, you don't need to worry much about which package to install. So uh, on the slide, on the first slide, I showed you that there was many, many components, right? Uh, Cinder, Glance, uh, API, uh, registry, whatever. It goes in a bit on every direction. So that's why I created these meta packages so that it makes it easier for you. Uh, you, you, you won't need to select them one by one. Uh, so the result as well is that uh, if you see on the OpenStack. Um, documentation on the official documentation just for installing something as simple as Glance to upload and use uh, images. They have like that because uh, of documentation because they need to manually create the database, manually uh, create the access rights, manually populate that. So with uh, under Debian, you just do apt-get install Glance and then it does it. <laughs> so. Um, the other thing which uh, I like with do using DebConf is that I, it gives you an interface to, uh, to, to test things and it's proven, okay? Like uh, Andreas Beckman uh, sent some bugs on the BTS saying that my packages do don't upgrade from one version to another. And that includes as well, <coughs> sorry, populating the, the, the database thing. Uh, and uh, another thing is that you can always use the Deb Debian front end non interactive mode. So if you don't like having questions uh, asked to you, then you can s still run in, non in a non interactive way. So when I do my tests, I just use proceeding and then you just install uh, the, the proxy node at once without asking me any questions. Uh, here's an example proceeding, so I won't go uh, a long time on it. I guess everybody here in this room knows how to do proceeding. And but the the thing is that I maintain the proceed script on that repository, so you won't need to rewrite it from scratch. Uh, there's still some work that needs to be done there, but it, it's mostly working. Uh, so um, another difference I have with with Ubuntu. Uh, let me check the time. Yeah, is is that uh, our release cycles are uh, very different? Okay, so Ubuntu follows the release cycles of OpenStack, which is every six months. 
Well, in Debian, I have to take care of other aspects like the new queue. It takes a long time to get new packages. Um, I, I do my work on top of Wizzy. So um, in production, Innovance, wi which pays me to do the, these Debian packages, uh, they, they use Wizzy. And like I guess um, mostly everyone who wants to run OpenStack in production, they don't want to, to run Seed or, or Jesse. So I maintain on a side package, on a side repository, uh, Wizzy backports, including all the de dependencies, so like hundreds of packages. Uh, so you, you are free to use it. My hope is that I will have soon a space to store that within Debian. Uh, I hope uh, that I will have access to PPA soon if it happens in Debian. Um, okay, so uh, I had lots of requests and bug reports for uh, non-respecting uh, the some rules which are stronger in Debian. Okay, so. I think that, I hope that uh, the packages we have in Debian are more DFSG free compliant. Uh, also in Debian, we have Heat, which does auto scaling. You won't find it in Ubuntu. There's FTP CloudFS and SFTP CloudFS, which I also maintain. So if you want to contribute, I will very welcome you to do so, because even if I'm full time, uh, hardly find enough time to be to do all, all what is needed in one release cycle. So uh, welcome on, uh, on IRC. I can I can help if you are doing setups. I'd, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, so before we go to the QA, I, w I've I want to show you that I've I've set up a small OpenStack cloud instance in in Debian in DebConf. It's in the server room there. So uh, there's Two compute nodes, which on which there's uh, four hard drives each. Two hard drives on each node have been used for Ceph, so we have a redundancy for the storage. And currently, I've set up only one compute node, uh, and then you, you can you can try the. Okay, le so let me show you a bit how it works. osc.dc13. Can you see the screen? So the way it works is that you use that. So uh, if you can't read or whatever, you can la la later have a look at the video. So the username is debcom13 with password su uh, super cool power. And you can use it to uh, push images, uh, install uh, uh, virtual machines, and see how it works. If you are scared, so the way it works is that after you go to apt-get install OpenStack clients, and then you'll be able to use it. And then you can do Nova list. It's a bit slow because the controller is on on the on the virtual machine, which doesn't have much resources. Quantum uh, netlist, etc. So. Um, I can show you the web interface. I'll show you the admin one. It's more fun. So everything that you do in Horizon is uh, compatible. Is 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 done just like uh, with the Python API. So everything you do in Horizon, you can do on the shell on the command line with the. Um, with the OpenStack clients, or you can use the Python modules. Because every client is both a Python module and a, and a command line thing. So when you use the console, then it uses uh, Spice. OK, that's a demo effect. OK, do, do, you, ha do you guys have any questions? Go ahead. There's like there's like ten minutes remaining. If I want to 
try it out. How much hardware do I need to try? How many hardware is required to play uh, with it? Okay, um, you can pretty much uh, use OpenStack with a single computer. Uh, though the only thing is that it's going to be hard for you to go from one to three. And uh, two doesn't really make sense in because you won't have redundancy. So, but you can start with one and get all three and then more. But best would be start with three. If you, that's what I did here. Okay. So here I have a virtual machine running on Zen. It could be whatever, just a computer running the API packages. So the Nova API, Cinder API, Glance API, whatever. And after, you, I, you can just set up two compute nodes, for example. It works with one as well. And, and then uh, Ceph, uh, which does the storage, uh, you can, it's best to run with at least two, I guess, as well. Okay, thank you. So you would need uh, two gigabytes for running all the API programs. And uh, uh, yeah. And then if you want to, s to have some workload on the compute nodes, obviously, a big amount of RAM. Okay. Is there on a, uh, any other question? No question. So, uh, thank you, Daniel. Hi. Um, how do upgrades work? Can you upgrade one component at a time, or do they have to go in lockstep? Yeah, the upgrade, upgrading is a big problem because uh, every component talk with Keystone, okay? So I guess you could upgrade Keystone first and then upgrade the other next. Though the big, prob the, the big problem you have is, let's say you have uh, 10 compute nodes, okay? And then you upgrade one node then with my packages, it's going to upgrade the SQL automatically. And then the other nine remaining compute nodes will have the old code running with the new database. And that's a problem. So mostly you have to upgrade everything at the same time. Though uh, upgrading doesn't mean that you turn off your uh, VMs, your running VMs. You can still have your running VMs and then upgrade all the cloud. It does work. Uh, the, the problem is that we scale when you have 1,000 nodes, then you have to upgrade 1,000 nodes at the same time. So it may be not really practical or you have a bit of downtime. Down Probably what you can do as well is use cells. So that there's a concept of cells. Let's say you have a data center with three rooms. Then you can have a kind of uh, tree and say, uh, I upgrade this cell first and then this cell and then this cell. That would work better, I guess. All right, any other question? Hi, uh, what is your plan for the stable relays of uh, Debian? I mean, uh, will you support uh, OpenStack uh, SX, uh, the whole life of uh, Rizzi? S uh, I'm trying to do so, to support uh, OpenStack SX as much as I can within uh, the stable release. Though it sometimes it's easy because Patches are ha easy to backport. Uh, sometimes it's hard, like currently I have a, a very difficult patch to backport to SX. Uh, if I get no help uh, from anyone, then probably I won't have time to do so. I'm, me, uh, as a Debian fan, I love to try to uh, support stable as much as I can though my customers and my company don't really need it, so it's a bit of conflict. I say that because Ubuntu is uh, no, okay. Uh, uh, don't believe outside of uh, their, uh, their Don't believe CPU Ubuntu when they say they do security support for SX, they do it badly, just as, as much as I do it badly for uh, Stable. Uh, they have no time and it's a different team, and I saw many security problems that were not addressed in Ubuntu as well. So if you run an OpenStack uh, cloud, my advice would be to use uh, the current release and upgrade as it goes. So um, if it's a private cloud, most of the time you're not affected by the, by the CVEs because most CVEs are on public infrastructures. 
It won't affect you if you're the only one having access to it. Uh, though if you have a public cloud, then you have to be current from the less, less, latest stable, that's my advice. So probably use my uh, private repository for OpenStack uh, on, on top of Wizzy, where I maintain currently Grizzly and soon Havana. So uh, if you use a private cloud, then stable is probably fine. I packaged Hadoop for Debian, and I made the experience that um, all the people much rather used um, the Debian packages from the company Cloudera, which had so many Hadoop contributors, and nobody was interested in the Debian packages. So this demotivated me a lot, of course. Have, do you made uh, similar experiences that people say we we take um, upstream OpenStack in some form instead of Debian packages? Uh, there's no way you can use directly uh, things from upstream with OpenStack if you have a, a large installation. I, I never heard anyone doing that. It might You have big companies like Rackspace that have their own deploying system uh, I know they, because they have so many nodes, they can't even think about using an FTP, so they deploy using BitTorrent. Uh, but uh, I, do, I don't know how, can, can, do you know how, how, how do you deploy in HP? Can you reply to that? Uh, uh, hang on, microphone. <laughs> The current public cloud is actually still running Diablo, so we, we currently have a second data center that we're okay. building, which which we try to be as close to upstream as possible. So the the, the, the deployment guys internally they're they're putting a framework in place where they periodically pull from upstream and apply some HP specific patches on top of it and then push it out. All right, all right. A any other question? Because otherwise I have some. Yeah, Thomas? So you already said that you are not using OpenStack for your company. That would I have am. interested me. What's then your motivation to No, 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 no. I'm not using OpenStack stable in Wizzy. I mean, I'm not using Debian stable with what OpenStack version I is in. In stable, the in Debian stable, there is SX. And then there's, on the other, there's Folsom and Grizzly. In Debian, in, in OpenStack, as a release name, and I use Grizzly, which is from la last April. So you have an offer in your company based on OpenStack? So I maintain Grizzly currently in SID, because I can't maintain it in stable, as you know. And then I use my own backport to Wizzy with Grizzly. Does it make sense? Yes, but I uh, looked at GPL host homepage, and I couldn't figure out what product uh, is using OpenStack what are you using OpenStack for? Currently, I use it only for uh, private cloud because I have no uh, billing software to play with. So I can't, I can't do the billing. There's metering with Salometer, but metering only tells you how much resources the customer have been using, and then you have to uh, kind of doing billing manually, right? Or use something like JBilling or these kind of fancy applications where you can plug things. But like, uh, yeah, for private cloud, it works great. Any, any other questions? OK, so I will use the remaining two minutes to tell you that I also maintain. You've got about 15. What? You've got 15, don't you? It's 45 minutes, right? I got 15 you minutes remaining. So I went faster than you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, no so uh, I have, I can, I can show more about about it. Um, so uh, is it installed? No, it's not installed. So I, I, I maintain as well a script to build OpenStack images. 
uh, which which uh, so it, it uses D bootstrap to to get it into a CH root, and then after it produces a simple image that you can use in Glens. So uh, that's that's the final result. an image dot list. That's a very simple script that does that. Who 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 uses parted to create the partition table, uh, do the format, uh, create the okay. So basically, you just do like that with URL. ftp.ch.debian.org slash debian minus s. So you will be what you use for uh, bootstrapping and then what goes in your source list. Yeah, and minus r and release. So I'm I'm going to so because you had the demo with uh, non-free services this morning, then I may explain to you how to use the free software services we have at DeadConf to uh, create a, an image and then start to use it with OpenStack. So at least if you don't set up OpenStack in your enterprise or uh, home, then at least you can try it. Uh, I heard that. Uh, HP can provide uh, some free accounts as well. Maybe you can talk about it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the second time I do that to you. <laughs> well, that's my plan, but the higher ups don't necessarily agree with me yet. So, yes, the plan is to provide some limited free account to the different communities Debian as well. But we still, I mean, our billings or our, our sign-up system requires credit cards and, I mean, you yeah. guys usually don't like to put in your personal credit card. So I'm working with product management to get that resolved. So um, my, my advice, if you need to use the cloud, is to use something that is interoperable. So like uh, either uh, uh, HP Cloud or Rackspace Cloud, and then after, if you want to uh, let's say it becomes large, and then it uh, it would be uh, it, it can become uh, relevant for your company to set up your own private cloud on top of OpenStack. So in that case, it's easy to migrate from a private provider to uh, your own provider. Uh, I'm sorry, it's kind of very very slow network because bootstrapping is not doing anything. Sorry? Ah, really? So it doesn't matter. Let's say it's finished. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to SSH again to the same machine. So it's going to produce this, okay, and then you do Glenn's image create, name of your image, the, the file, which is the QCO2 format. And then once you did image create like that, then it appears here, Glenn's image list. So once you have the ID here, okay, uh, maybe I should first show, explain here. Explain that. So you have the concept of uh, uh, net network, uh, virtual networks in OpenStack. So what, what you see here is a graph that is maintained by Horizon dynamically depending on what you've created. So the network here in green is the real network that we've been using in, in DevConf. You may recognize the IPs. 
So when you create uh, when a new user, you, you either create that new external network to map the real uh, IPs, or you, you, you do it once, and you say that that network is publicly shared. And once you've done that, then you add another, uh, a LAN, like, like in here, on the IPs that, that you, you want. So because I'm admin, I can see both, okay, that's my own network as an admin, okay, and that one is the one I've set up for the Debcom 13 account. So uh, I, I can see both. And both will have a, a different router. So every time you have a new user, it will set up a new router, a new virtual router, with a, uh, and then connect to it. So your virtual machines won't have an IP address directly. They will have only IPs on the LAN uh, given by the DHCP. So what you would do is um, ask for a, that one of the IPs on the external network is forwarded through NAT to one of your virtual machines. And then from there, on one virtual machine, you can set up HA proxy, for example, to reach your other virtual machines. So uh, on, on the command line, it goes like this. So quantum. So you see, I have, I have my three networks. And if I do quantum subnet list, then it shows me the IP addresses of these, OK? So here you can see my external network and the two uh, LANs that I've created. Uh, Nova boot. Then after, with a simple script like this one, then you can create Okay, I, I list I list the images, I list the nets, and after I, I create it with Nova Boot flavor, image and the neighbor the number the ID of the image with one nick. So if I don't put minus minus nick net ID equal, then by default it will attach the virtual machine on the external network and on the LAN at the same time. So it will have two Ethernet ports. And uh, that, that's, the ba that's the basics for uh, how, how to use OpenStack with, with the clients. So uh, I give you the credentials again, ag again if you want to try. Yeah, any, any questions? Got like uh, 13 minutes to go. <laughs> I think we had many questions already. And then that's it then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>